well, it hasn't been reflected from his recent policy of consistent selection by last week's selected by the quality of the substitutes. The noon is Mr. Sandy Roy, a charter surveyor from Aberdeen. He's in his 11th season as a grade one official. Conditions much more conducive to good football, although there is a strong breeze blowing down the field. The surface itself is excellent. And there's Andy Gorham taking advantage of the breeze. Rangers centre half. It's played out there for McCoist. Red Hayfley providing the service for McCoist. But for once, time here for Mitchell. Collision in the middle of the field there. The two heads collided accidentally. Martha McLeod and Dale Gordon. Well, the breeze stiffening there. You can tell from Chris Reed's kick out. Held up in the wind. Here's Mikhailichenko. Robertson has gone sprinting forward. This is McCall. And McCoist. All with the eye for goal. 33rd match of the season, he's only drawn a blank 10 times and he's scored a total of 37. He's been anxious about the damage, Stuart Colley, the physio. Here's Weir, that's great play by Mickey Weir. Wonderful trickery inside the box from Weir, taking on the Karichenko and Stevens. Karachenko trying the first time ever, there's Hayfley! Rangers take the lead! A fine sweeping counter-attack! And Hayfley shot, and it came at a time, two minutes from half-time, but it appeared as though Hibbs had survived playing up the hill against the wind, but then Trevor Stephen broke in a counter-attack after a poor corner from Mickey Weir. David Robertson had the chance here to flight the ball in. It came off Gareth Evans. Mikarichenko swiped and missed. But then, deadly finishing by Mark Hately. And that's the goal which makes the half-time score. Hibs nil, Rangers 1. So Morda McLeod back in the Hibs dugout with that face damage. The black eye. Looks as though he's come out of the boxing ring. Well, the pattern of play could certainly change in this second period. Rangers had all the territorial advantage, as you would expect, playing down the slope with the wind behind. The hips have these advantages now, and they also have... Here's Orr. Weir wants it back. Orr uses him as a decoy, flights the ball in. And the header on comes off the post! Well, Gora was caught clearly there in two minds, and that ball was angled in and goal. Keith Wright's touch deceived the ball. Good play this from Neil Orr, plating it across. The right got that touch, it came off the post, and the keeper knocked it behind to Jackson. Face here by John Brown, across it goes to Miller. Back into the area, there's Jackson! The best chance of the match so far for Hibbs. Coming in the back of a splendid move. And Darren Jackson, I'm sure, can't believe it. Well, Willie Miller played this ball in and went over the head of John Brown. Controlled well by Jackson. And I thought Andy Gora made a brilliant save there, but the goal kick was given. Here's corner, it's helped on there. The chance is on! It's Pat McGinley for Hibbs! A goal which is richly deserved, but Hibs are back on level terms. Sixty-nine minutes of the match gone, the Mickey Weir's corner, a very good head flick on there at the near post by Graham Mitchell, and in goes McGinley for the killer finish. Well, it's certainly no more than Hibs deserve for their recent spell of attacking play. Pat McGinley deserting his central defensive role for that set piece. Takes full advantage. Rangers coming back 
back though. There's Gordon Hunter. Breaks back to Stephen. And there's the goal for Rangers. A superb strike by Trevor Stephen. Carefully directed into the corner. Well, what incredible action now. Stuart McCall lofting the ball forward. Problems for him's defence that appear to be cleared up there as Mitchell played the ball away. But now for Stephen to steer the ball right in off the ball. Hadley gets up. The goal for Rangers. The Mark Hadley special. And suddenly the match is drifting away from him. 72 minutes gone. Third goal in three minutes, and look at the way Hadley climbs for this. Gets in front of the defenders and bullets the ball home. Jackson holding off Brown. Back with Orr. Miller challenging. Here's Rear. That's for Keith Wright. Gary Stevens is there. And Keith Wright could manage it. Turned in this time by Jackson. He's made it at last. And Hibs are right back in the game. Quite incredible entertainment here at Easter Road. And Hibs are certainly good value for this. When you look at the miss that Keith Wright has before Jackson scored, it really is remarkable. Putting pressure on there. And the ball broke off David Robertson. A miss kick completely by Wright. And broke there off Andy Gorham. And there was that in Jackson on the tight angle. Face now from Hallstrap. Gary Stevens breaks on the right for the middle. Goes to McCoy. This could tie it up. A brilliant finish from McCoy. And that surely will settle it. The head defense opened up by the through ball. Trevor Stevens brought the ball from that defensive position. Held it up. Look for Hallstrap inside. Look at the quality of this pass to Peter Hauser. Through the gap it goes, and McCoy said he's very bad. Point certainly appear to be heading for Ibrox, but Hibbs looking for another goal. Mitchell helps it on. And a great save on the line, but it's McKinley who thumps the ball home in the 90th minute of the match. The second of the game, and chances were going all the time inside the area there. Mickey Weir fighting the ball in, it was again Mitchell's a presence which caused the problem. It brought there to Keith Wright, it brought up that magnificent save initially from Gorham, but McKinley was on the rebound. And 4-3 is the score. We've had six goals in the second half, but in the end it's Rangers who collect the points. A new most sensational second half. We've seen the Premier Division for a very long time. I felt in the second half we, uh, our performance was of the high standard. Um, Rangers are a quality side and they were disappointed in the, the, the loss of the points, but uh, in saying that, the performance from the players was excellent. At the start of that second half, would you consider that Hibs played as well as you had them play this season? Oh, definitely. I think uh, the, the, the fans that were here today, the Rangers fans especially as well, must have saw that we posed Rangers a lot of problems. Um, and, and their the quality of player at the end of the day took them out and that's the finishing with McCoy and Haley. Uh, if they weren't so good finishers, I think we would have won the game today. Do you find that a bit dull and boring early this afternoon? <laughs> second half, I uh, didn't get too many kicks at all second half, but the second half I thought was a, a great game for, um, to watch, as I did most of the watching, but um, I think both sets of fans were quite happy with the entertainment they got. Do you recall Rangers though having as many problems as that in any one match for a long time? No, I can't. Possibly the Dundee game up at Dens where we didn't uh, we didn't defend well. The defenders will probably give me a stick tomorrow. But I don't think we defended well, especially corners against. That's something we'll, we'll work on in the, over the next couple of days. But um, all credit to Hibs, they certainly put, under us a lot of, put us under a lot of pressure. From your own point of view, you didn't have a lot to do in that second half, in all honesty. What about the winning goal? Uh, it was a great ball from Peter Eustra. Peter uh, sees things very, very early. And as soon as he got the ball, I knew that he was going to thread the ball through. And to his credit, he did. And I just told folk it by the keeper. I was very pleased because, as you see, I wasn't having a lot to do in the second half.